Today, I'll be providing you with some budget-friendly and practical tips to use with your PVC projects. If you watch my videos in the past, some of these will be familiar to you, but some are completely new. To see what I have for you, stay tuned. For every one of my PVC projects, I use screws to hold the connections together instead of glue. I do this because when PVC projects are no longer needed, the joints and pipes can be recycled for use in other projects by simply removing the screws and dismantling everything. The ideal size screw I use is the number 10 by 3 quarter inch pen head screw. Depending on the structural requirements of the project, the number of screws needed per connection will differ relative to the stresses the connection will endure. I don't have any scientific tests to calculate the stresses on the joint, but basically, if the joint is only holding up the weight of a minimal number of PVC pipes, one screw per connection should suffice. Also, at least one screw should always be used to keep the PVC pipe from separating from the connection. Two or three screws should be used if the project will support additional weight. Projects like my monitor stand or shopping cart are good examples. Graphite, or dry lube as I call it, is something I use to make PVC pipes and joints easier to assemble and disassemble. To apply it, I sketch it onto the pipe and the corresponding joint. I don't color the PVC black, but I do try to apply more than just a bunch of marks. This process is a bit time consuming, so because you can almost do it with your eyes closed, I usually do it while I'm watching a show on TV. In testing the ease of disassembly, some might think it doesn't feel that much different than with no dry lube, but for myself, I do think it helps. This idea came out of necessity when I needed to extend the height of my original monitor stand and realized that a single PVC pipe that had been lengthened might not have enough strength to safely support the weight of my 24 inch monitor. My solution for this was to cut a length of 3 quarter inch plywood narrow enough to snugly fit inside of the PVC pipe and long enough to extend its entire length. Because the weight of the monitor might be too much for a single length of PVC pipe, the combination of the PVC pipe reinforced by an inner wooden rib could provide the strength needed. Once assembled, the length of PVC pipe had no flex at all. In hindsight though, I did come to find that PVC pipe is very rigid and not susceptible to bending as long as the pieces are short. I'd say when the PVC pipe lengths get over 12 inches and has to support a reasonable amount of weight is when a rib is necessary. This DIY effort was in my recent video on adding an enclosure to my PVC platform bed frame. The problem comes when there's a project done using 3 inch PVC pipe and you want to add to it but using 1 and 1 quarter inch PVC pipe. There are PVC joints to accommodate this, but they're expensive. The prep work is simple. You make cuts along the long length of the T to remove as much of that section as possible, while leaving enough of a flap on both sides of the short connection to provide a surface to screw the DIY reducer into the larger PVC pipe. To be sure the T is positioned correctly before screwing it in place, insert one of the vertical pipes into the T. Using a framing square, or a reasonable replacement, align the pipe approximately with the edge of the square so that it's square to the floor. This doesn't need to be exact, so close enough is fine. Masking tape the two sides down to the bed frame PVC pipe so that it won't move while you drill some temporary holes. Drill a hole on each side of the joint close to the connector and through the PVC bed frame. 
Screw the T in place till the screws are reasonably tight. Now that the T is held in place by the temporary screws, drill four more holes for the permanent screws that will hold the T in place more securely. Now that the four permanent screws hold the T in place, the temporary screws can be removed and used on the next T. The weighted base is useful when you have a project that stands taller than the base is wide and there's a chance of the structure tipping over. Whatever shape you decide to make the base, the important step before completing it is to fill it with rocks to give it some additional weight. I usually fill it with rocks that are sold at Lowe's, but there are other things you can use if you need more weight, such as recycled nails or nuts and bolts. A slide on T is useful when a PVC joint is needed that slides over a PVC pipe and can easily rotate around it. The trick is to get a tee that's the next size larger than what's standard for the size of PVC pipe. The larger tee will be loose to a point where it rattles, but I don't mind that versus the functionality it provides. On the trailer, it serves as the tow bar that connects to my bicycle. The oversized tee needs to swivel up and down while the bicycle and trailer are going over bumps or dips in the terrain. What you're looking at is a PVC hex head plug. For my PVC projects, I like to use it as an accessory adapter. Its design makes it easy to attach flat accessories to, as long as the accessory can be bolted in place with a single bolt. Here in this clip, I'm demonstrating all the steps that went into drilling out and converting the plug into one of the two monitor mounts used in my dual monitor stand. For the fender washer being used, one recommendation I have is to use multiple washers if the accessory being attached will put a lot of stress on the plug. Also, the accessory does not have to have a large flat surface like the monitor mount. It can be a smaller surface like what would be attached to the plug for this caster. There was a time when I did a lot of metal and woodworking for a number of years, but I found that I really like PVC construction the most. A lot of that might have to do with my tight schedule and lack of time to spend doing projects at a more dedicated level. An example of what I'm trying to say is take a joint for instance. With wood or metal, a joint has to be planned, it takes accurate measuring, cutting, Sometimes using a special jig while you do the cutting, something like a joint can take some time to do with metal or wood. On the other hand, PVC joints are prefabbed. In terms of a joint, there's no measuring, just stick everything together and you're done. A PVC project may not have the strength and durability of its metal or wood counterpart, but it may not need to. Once you get used to using PVC for different projects, you'll find many instances where it can replace the wood or metal version. It may be a little bulkier, but if you can look past that, you'll find yourself building a lot more everyday things out of PVC. I hope this video can help you with your PVC projects. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now and I'll catch you in the next video.